uh, just looking generally at what it is, it is just an object in free fall, meaning there's no, we assume the only force that's acting on it is gravity. That's what, what projectile motion is. Projectile motion includes going up, it includes going down, and if it's in the air moving horizontally as well. Um, looking at one dimensional projectile motion, um, and that's what we're going to start with, that's what this video is going to be focused on. We're just looking at an object sort of being either dropped or launched straight up in the sky um, where there's no x component to its velocity, no horizontal component, only, only uh, vertical. And of course this is review. Um, so the assumptions that you can make with 1D projectile motion, one is that the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared down, and the 9.8, remember like it's down is the direction. So as with anything we do in kinematics, you define a positive direction and the 9.8 could end up being negative or positive depending on that. Um, if you're dropping an object, it has no initial velocity. Um, if an object's thrown up, the time it takes to go up equals the time it takes to come down. That kind of makes sense, especially when we're assuming no air resistance. Though an interesting thought experiment is how does air resistance affect the time? Does it affect, um, does it make the, t does the time still equal with air resistance? Or is time up slower or time up sl down slower? And that's a, that's a great thought experiment. Think about that. Um, if an object is thrown up, the velocity when it starts to move up is the velocity when it's back at the height. So basically when you catch it again, it's moving the same speed as it was when it left your hand. And when it gets to the top, it has no velocity for a fraction of a second, an instant, as it turns around. So just looking at the graphs, and I think one of your assignment questions uses the graphs. And I made an example where um, something was in the sky air for four seconds. That's just basically what my when I made the graph what it worked out to be but it could be it could be anything but the shape is the same no matter what if you're something is being launched you know say from the ground or from a certain height um, it has an initial speed and by the slope of the position time graph you can see it becomes less and less steep until at the very top it's zero velocity zero at maximum height it takes half the time to go up and then it turns around and comes back down again um, all of these graphs are assuming that uh, the positive axis is up. Uh, velocity, um, the velocity time graphs, and again I use the example of a four second drop and in this case going from 20 meters, like leaving, say say you're launching something from your hand, leaves your hand at 20 meters per second, you catch it again at 20 meters per second but it's in the south direction, right? Um, and, and at t equals two seconds you have a velocity of zero. See the slope is constant because slope of velocity time graph, you may remember, is acceleration. So the slope will be 9.8 the whole time. And that's, that's true for every single case of projectile motion, regardless of the initial speed and the time it's in the air. Okay? Um, and then acceleration. Then if you do an acceleration time graph, it's always going to be, again, I'm assuming that up is positive, so this is below. It's 9.8 meters per second squared down. And it's a horizontal line because it doesn't change. Okay, so just a little example. Third throw in his tennis ball. Here's his tennis ball. It's got initial speed. Hits his hand again 3.5 seconds later. And we want to know how high does it go. I think in grade 11 you might have done a lab with this. So um, what we're going to do, first of all, is we know it comes back to his hand 3.5 seconds later, but we're only going to concern ourselves with the up portion of the trip. Now if you consider the whole portion, that means that the displacement to the ball would be zero. Right, so if we want to find the displacement up, then we have to only consider half the trip. Um, so then that means the time is half, 1.75 seconds, and we know that its speed at the top is zero. Okay, I'm going to assume in this case and it, that up is positive, though down could be positive too, that would be fine. Um, so we need to choose one of the kinematic formulas, and we're looking for displacement and we don't know v1, we don't know the speed when it leaves Bird's hand, so we're going to choose this one because there's no mention of v1. Okay, Substitute, solve, the thing goes 15, 15 meters in the air, which is a pretty good throw for Ferd. It's tougher than I thought. Okay, that's 1D projectile motion. The next video will go through two-dimensional projectile motion.